I like this for this because it's not just the dust, which is bad. Eyes, ears. Yeah, it protects from all the flinging debris. on the good floor.
I'm working on this old floor. This is the finished flooring. It needs refinishing. Right here, just so you understand what's happening, is going to be a wall that we have to reframe. So here's the wall. This is the room. Now you can see an old cutout from a heater vent. Well, we're going to patch this in. Let me just square up the edges first. I know this isn't the best tool for the job, but it's the only square I currently own. So I'm gonna make it work. I'm gonna cut this back. We want a nice straight edge, but I'm also gonna cut back this one and this one because they're both notched into, I have the tongue missing here. And no, I'm not gonna worry about staggering these or blending them to the floor and hiding it. I know you can do that. I could cut them back at different lengths and I could work in the board so that it kind of disguises it a little more. I'm just gonna keep it really a patch. That's all it's gonna be. It's gonna be a very simple straight edge patch. I'm not gonna worry about it. It's the way I wanna do it. This is terrible. It took me a few tries to get my line straight. I kept going off. I ended up using this piece of OSB as a guide so I could run my saw across it, so I could run my saw along it. We're mostly there. Now we're going to clean it up with this. I managed to get this pretty clean and looking good. So, yeah, I just noticed that this one has a bit of a cup to it, so I might not use it. Can you see? Just wanted to put a couple nails in there to tighten those up. So there it is, the floor is patched, it doesn't look too bad, and it will blend away once we clean this whole place up. Now somebody asked us, why are the old subfloor boards laid diagonally? And I thought that was a great question, so I wanted to answer it in a video. I think the best way to explain this is to just demonstrate it. So as you can see, here's our floor. The boards are running diagonal to the floor joists. So we have joists running this way. You guys know the floor joists are the structural supports underneath that hold your floor. Now before the days of plywood, people would just use wooden boards just like this for a subfloor. And now these boards are usually lower quality wood with a lot of imperfections, but they worked. It was a solid base to build your floor upon. Now since our floor joists are this way, common sense says you're gonna have to run your subfloor this way since we're doing wooden boards. The problem is it's good practice to also run your finished floor across your floor joists perpendicular because that's going to give you the most solid secure floor. Now the problem is that you can't, it's not good practice to do them both the same direction. So you never want a finished floor the same direction as floorboards on a subfloor because it's gonna show all your imperfections and it's not gonna be as stable. Let's pretend these boards are no longer at an angle. And now when you find imperfections like this, now imagine if your floor was going the same direction as that board, 
and now we have a big gap under the length of that board and it can rock into that hole. And you're gonna see all these imperfections in your finished floor because it's gonna be all wonky. It's gonna be really hard to get a flat floor with all these imperfections. I mean, look at this. So basically the answer was to lay the subfloor at a diagonal. If it's this way, it's still crossing the floor joists. So here's a joist, here's a joist. So we're still getting our span across the joist to nail it down. Cause you obviously can't go parallel to the joist. You'd have nothing to nail to. So we have our joist connection, but then we also have a way to span the finished floor across the boards and give a stronger floor and hide the imperfections. And that's the main reason it was done this way. Because now you can see when the floor crosses it, it can span any kind of little problem. I don't know if that makes sense, but basically you can see it right here, how this would be a better surface to hook to than if they were all going the same direction. And that means stuff like this that has nothing under it doesn't matter because your floor will be fully supported as it passes over it. If one of your floorboards comes loose, your finished floor is going to come loose with it. It's just not good. So for the most strength, for the smoothest floor, it just made sense to do this diagonal so that the floor joists can run across the subfloor and the subfloor could run across the joists. Well, I hope I explained that okay. I was trying to answer the question in the comments and I'll tell you, I couldn't figure out how to get the words out to explain, well, the boards on top of the boards and these boards are hooked to those boards and they have to go at an angle and you know, it's, how do you, some things are really hard to explain. So did my best, I hope it makes sense. Now we have a unique problem because somebody in the future laid a wood floor in the other room and they ran on the dead perpendicular to the floor joists. So here's the floor joist, here's the subfloor boards straight across. That means that if we lay our floor the way we want it, it's gonna be not great. Won't be terrible, but it's not great. So that means we would either have to run our finished floor at a diagonal and reverse the order, or we run our finished flooring parallel to the floor joists, which is doable because it's a solid wood floor underneath it. And we can run it that way. But the point is you always want your finished floor to cross over your subfloor. You just don't want them the same direction if you can avoid it. Now, nobody really has to worry about that anymore because we have plywood and plywood gives you large flat areas and you can nail any direction you want. In fact, you can put, you don't even have to worry about your joists if you don't want to. You can put your finished flooring on however you want it, but it is still common practice to, to put your floors perpendicular to your joists. Now we have another hole to patch. This one's going to be a lot easier. Because it's just the subfloor, no finished floor to deal with yet. So, first, I cut this piece of plywood that we're going to be putting underneath. This is going to support the patch and tie the floor all together into one piece. I'm going to center it up and just make some rough lines on it. So that when it's under there and I can't see where the edges are, I can get it lined up on that hole, pretty much centered where I want it. I just realized that I had that turned the completely wrong way. So this is basically telling me, you know, that I have enough room on either side. So yeah, put it just like that.
Now I have this piece of wood that I cut. We'll pop this in. Man, all my wood is warped around here. Can you see this? Well, I can see it. It's not straight and it's rocking and it makes the edges stick up. Well, let's see if these will work. Well, I found some scraps of tongue and groove. It's not one piece, but three of them together. I think that'll work. That looks good. Perfect. Now it's nice and flush. Exactly what we needed. And used up some more scrap wood that we didn't have a use for. We'll call that done and safe. I'm just cleaning up some last minute little jobs I wanted to do and getting ready to start reframing a wall. Now, what I'm focused on right now is this little bedroom back here, which looks like a mess, but it's gonna to come together and I don't think it'll be too hard. I have a couple of studs right here that I laid down and I laid out my wall template on. So basically, you know, all my studs where I want them, we're gonna get it nailed together, stood up, and start to see a bedroom start taking form again. Okay, even getting rid of those little pokey nails made yep. a big difference. And we don't want to forget the header. So now that the wall is done, I am procrastinating because well, it's time for electrical and insulation already. And both of those jobs require me to clean out that room. It's not the jobs that I'm dreading. It's moving all these piles of wood that I left in there and I have no place for. I'm gonna get cleaning so I can get working. So here's the story. I started cleaning up this mess. That's what I was supposed to be working on. And I got sidetracked cleaning up and reorganizing the workshop. So the workshop has become kind of a catch-all and a disaster and I, I can't function out there. And we wanted to put some of this wood out there. Mm -hmm. So basically, as you can see, we spent the rest of the night basically organizing, cleaning, and not cleaning this, but cleaning that so we can get here. The workshop is looking better. Mm -hmm. It's more organized. We have a little more space to work in. You couldn't even walk in there before. It was and, bad. And that means tomorrow this should go quicker because I got rid of some of the stuff already that I didn't want in the way, little boards. And we should be able to knock this out pretty smoothly if we get to it. But we do have some other projects we want to start rolling into. So I don't know, I don't know what order things are going to go in. We got some cool stuff that we're trying to get to. Mm -hmm. So... I guess stay tuned and see what's next because we never know. We jump around a lot, but we always appreciate you guys watching. So thanks for watching and until next time, take care. See ya.